Hi, my name's Vanessa. And my name's John. We have been fostering for Border Terrier Welfare for almost two and a half years. It wasn't something we had planned to do. Out of the blue, we received a call from BTW Hearts Rep, Sarah Pateman, asking if we'd be able to check on the situation of a dog that needed to come into care. Unknown to us, we set forwards onto our first steps to foster for Border Terrier Welfare. Ben was left behind after his owner passed away and no family were able to take him in. After seeing him, we couldn't let him stay, so with the paperwork ready, the next day we went to collect him. A rather beautiful chap laid underneath that bedraggled fur. Fortunately for Benjamin, he came to us in the nick of time. An infection in the gums had breached into his nasal cavity. This was life-threatening. In true Border style, he only showed minor discomfort when eating. The extraction of ten teeth must have been a relief. Ben, or Benjamin as we like to call him, was a reactive dog, 13 years old and very deaf. He had lived with an elderly lady who got him as a puppy when she was in her mid-70s. Benjamin was almost certainly a house dog for at least for his later years. Over the next three months he gained fitness and would easily keep walking pace with Edith and Leo. Benjamin and our dogs were great together. Reactive dogs can live together. As Border Terrier Welfare have limited foster homes for those dogs that needed medical care and not able to go directly into a new home, we were up to doing it again. The next dog quickly arrived. This young boy came with a rap sheet that had us a little bit concerned. He had reportedly bitten the vet, bitten the vet nurse, bitten the groomer and redirected aggression onto a man that was walking him. Despite his alleged past, his main concern that he had been diagnosed with a spinal condition, discospondylitis. New x-rays highlighted some further decline in his disc. Not that it showed in his day-to-day -day life. His very energetic boy and the tail that never stopped wagging. Better images carried out by MRI scan and after the consultation, a date was booked for his treatment. It's this sort of care that donations for BTW really count. Veterinary costs are a big expense, even with those vets giving more favourable prices for charity organisations. 48 hours after the operation, we were picking him up from Dick White referrals. Amazingly, he was bright as a button and raring to go, like nothing had happened. Keeping this boy quiet and rested for the next few months was challenging. Only being allowed 10 minute lead walk and toilet breaks in the first two weeks, then very slowly building the exercise time up. Once he had recovered enough, we took to trying to help with his reactive side. Typically, it was with other dogs while out on walks, working with advice from our trainer. With his recovery well on track and seeing some improved behaviour, it was time to seriously find a new home for him. On the Essex Border Terrier's owner walk, we met up with his potential new owner and his Border Terrier. Things went well. After a few meetings, a day trip, a short sleepover, he went to his new home and fantastic dedicated owner, even keeping up with seeing his trainer and close enough we could have the occasional meet-up. Of all the numerous traits he was supposed to have come with, he never once showed any of them. Always happy to go to the vets, I was able to strip him without issues and clip his claws. He fitted in with us and was able to freely move around with Edith and Leo, visiting our local dog-friendly pub and coming away for a mini break with our friends and their border terrier. He really became part of our lives over those 15 months. Many said, you can't rehome him now. But if we become failed fosters, it would mean we would not be able to take another dog on. 
having two Border Terriers of our own with reactive issues and some in-home fighting, bringing foster dogs in may not have seemed to be the wisest thing to do. The relationship between us and them was a big contribution towards their behaviour and something that we needed to address. Edith went through an intense training program and that brought her reactivity into check and Leo having general training too. We had been giving them too much freedom, allowing them too many choices, certainly too much too soon. They had full run of the house, including a pet door. Setting boundaries and access to living space and toys was part of the solution. Our knowledge of training and how to live with our dogs saw a big change in the house rules and management, now with some strict rules and boundaries. As our trainer put it regarding Leo and Edith, would you give a three-year-old the same privileges as a teenager? Edith had earned certain level of access, but Leo needed to work for his. We took control of their environment and resources. We were seeing a real turnaround in their behaviour. With boundaries and structures now set out, we could introduce and enable a new dog to live safely in our home and most importantly set them up to go to their permanent home. Having a foster dog is not all love, cuddles and kisses on the couch. It's almost the opposite. At first giving the dog enough personal space and guiding them in the first day or two, there's not really much in the way of affection. It's very easy to put the dog under pressure and not even know it and reassuring a dog when nervous, fearful or anxious can be reinforcing rather than assuring. Allowing them to adjust and work through the first phase to make them more confident and unable to deal with other stressful situations. With us being there, providing guidance by staying calm and neutral, they adapt and start to trust very quickly. It's usual just the first night we may see them a bit confused or uncertain. Within a few days, they're getting used to their new surroundings and into the new routine. Although we never obligated to do any training, there was the fact that any dog we had in our care needed to live alongside our own. We are not trainers by any means, but we can still teach house manners these to us are things like waiting at the threshold of the front door and the back door, not barging out of the crate or jumping up for food, no bin diving or counter surfing, being able to switch off and relax. Outside things such as walking them near busy roads, cycleway, crowds in shopping centres, getting to them to walk on different types of surfaces, making sure they're comfortable in all sorts of environments. We do basic obedience, walking nicely on the lead, sit and down, stays, recalls and retrieving, getting them to tax their brains, making them think along with physical activity is a great way to tire them out. Keeping the structure on the walks helps build the relationship and it goes towards creating good leadership, depending on how well they do and how long they are with us. We will do this alongside our own dogs. One of the best tools we have in our home are the crates. Having a dog conditioned with sleeping and being crated while you're out has a lot of pluses going for it. A dog can spend time in a crate even while you're in the home is unlikely to suffer from separation anxiety. The possible chance of illness or injury, it will provide an invaluable tool towards a less stressful recovery. We also had crates, but we only used them relatively briefly at the first with our own dogs. Going back to using them as part of the way we live with them has now shown to be very, very beneficial. Other things that are important are being able to handle the dog putting hands on to check for parasites like ticks, looking down the ears and checking teeth, nail clipping and hand stripping their coats, making sure that we can do all of these things.
getting them on the right diet and to and a correct body weight we favour grain free food due to health issues we have previously encountered and found raw feeding most beneficial particularly where food intolerances are involved getting the dogs onto a good quality and suitable food is all part of setting them up to be healthy and successful in their new home.